All right, people, I'm back again. You know, I was going over Matthew, and uh, you know, everybody act like Jesus made it so much easier for us. Yes, he did make it easy for us. We don't have to offer the sacrifice. We got a way to get to heaven. The only way we can live a, a life pleasing to God and with the help of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. But Jesus never did away with anything. Y'all do know that, right? He never done away with nothing. He just fulfilled. The first thing he fulfilled was the sacrifice on the cross for our sins. Not for us to continue to live in sin. You know, he offered the final sacrifice. That's it. You see, you still got to ask for forgiveness. You still got to forgive other people. Do you understand? You know, in the Old Testament, they had to do this annually. You understand? Basically, like people think Jesus died on the cross. Basically, once you give your life to Jesus, you just stop sinning, period. You just, you, be, you get perfect. Why do you think he gave you instructions? <laughs> if, if, I can put it this way. If all was the, all you had to do was give your life over to Jesus Christ, we wouldn't need no instructions. That would have been the New Testament. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins that whoever should believe, live on him, believe on him and call on his name will be saved. And that was it. That should be a done deal. Nothing else. It won't be nothing else. But it's more. It's, come on now. Come on. You know, not for you to continue to do crazy things because oh Jesus died for my sin you have your reward You everybody's going to reap what they sow I know a lot of people when you hear reap what you sow that means you know, most people do that when they mad at you you're going to reap what you sow but in reality you're going to reap what you sow anyway whether you believe it or not most people use it for karma uh, reap what you sow everybody's going to that's why he gave us specifics and then you can read in the New Testament further on, if we do sin, if somebody say they don't sin, they are liars. You see, that's what the Pharisees feel in the character is. Well, I'm, I'm sin free. I abide by the ten. Oh, you do? What about, have you ever looked at a woman? And lust after? Oh, yeah, I see. You see, Jesus did not make it easier. He went in great detail in regards to what sin really is. So have, is anybody in this world, I'm going to ask you a question now. You see how righteous you are. Have you ever sinned before? Are you perfect? This is that ain't a trick question now. This is not a trick question. Yes, you have. I don't care who you are. The pastor. You have. You have done something you weren't supposed to do. That's why Jesus said when you pray, you ask for forgiveness from your trespasses. And then you get to a point where God will reveal to you what your issues are too. So you don't do them no more. Right? So this takes time, people. But not once did Jesus say, I did away with what I wrote. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said? She's like, why would I do away with what I wrote? What I was a part of. The Ten Commandments. The rules and regulations I gave y'all. Why would I do away with what I wrote? No, I didn't. I wrote it, says the Lord. I am the word of God, says the Lord. So I'm going to do away with my own word. And then I'm going to tell you, my word will not return void. So I'm going to do away with my own word so you can get a free pass and do what you want to do? No. If you do well, won't your deeds be accepted? If not, sin lies at the door. Those same rules apply. Ain't nothing different, people. It's just a little harder now. But it's a little easier with Christ. Do you get it now? All those things I read to you today, it's straightforward. But a lot of people don't read their Bibles. Because they go on what people say. They give you that little pamphlet. This is your starting process. You know why it's a little pamphlet? Because it's the starting process. You need the big pamphlet to finish it. You need the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's the Bible. You need that. That's just a starting point. 
You see, a lot of y'all start and never reach the finish line. A lot of y'all gonna start and never reach the finish line because you're not taking the time to study to show yourself approved. You're just walking around. I'm a Christian now. I'm born again. Doing what you want to do. Living how you want to live. No suffering at all. Just doing exactly what you've been doing. Ain't no suffering. You sin not. You see, a lot of people read the Bible and be like, I, don't, I just don't understand. He said, if you say you sin, you a liar. And then he say, sin not if you are a new creation. It's like instruction. Stop doing crazy stuff. Stop doing stuff that you aren't supposed to do. <clears throat> Parents know this. You tell your kids to do one thing. And they do it anyway. And then if they do it, you, you spank them or you discipline them however you want. And then they might stop. Same with the Lord. If you call yourself his, he's going to chastise you. He said, whom the Lord loves, he chastises you. Because he doesn't do, away with, to do with you like sons and daughters. If he don't chastise you, you're a bastard child. A lot of y'all ain't getting chastised. Why? Because you're bastards. I didn't say it. The word says. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of y'all is living just how y'all want to live. No chastisement, nothing at all. And then, glory be to God. I swear, I put that on God. And you keep saying it. I put that on God. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God on it. And God let you do it. God loves me. I swear to God, God loves me. <laughs> you see, I'm telling you people, you can keep doing something wrong so long that God will give you over to the imagination of your heart. Give you strong delusion that you will believe lies. You still believe in your own lies. So you just so you don't start believing your own lies? Read that Bible. Read that Bible. I know people with no forgiveness in their hearts. None. Like I'm a very forgiving person, but I'm not a forgetful person. Make sense? Do you think God forgets anything that you do? I'm gonna ask you a question. Some of you are going to say yes. Well, if God forget everything you do, why does he say in Revelations, every man be, will be judged according to their works? Basically, it's like a little notebook for your whole life. Being documented. Every little deed. God, don't forget. Don't. He said he can wipe away your sins. But he didn't forget what you did. No. No. God gave us a memory. In that case, you know, you'll wake up every morning and just start fresh and new, don't know nothing. You know, like God can make you forget certain things. And not everything, you know. That's hard. You know how hard it is to forget stuff. In that case, you might well forget because sometimes the worrying of your lost loved one causes you to suffer. Well, maybe God can take that away from you too, make you forget that you had a mother or a father, make you forget the people you love. If you're going to just take everything away from you, you might well just... That's not for here. That's for heaven. <laughs> when... There's no more worry, no more pain, no more suffering. As long as you live here, you're going to deal with what goes on here. Well, the Bible says, be not just a, be not a forgetful hearer, but also a doer. So the Bible encourages remembering. You know, people hate to say, people to say this, to remember that time? A lot of time might not even be the purpose, might be God. Remember that time? Remember that? That's the past. Well, the reason I brought it back up because you just did it again. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> Remember? You see, you all want to bring up the past. Because you're doing it right now. <laughs> and I'm trying to say 
this is habitual for you? You keep doing the exact same thing you remember? <laughs> I remember when we, eh, whatever. People want to forget. Forgetting ain't going to help you nothing. It ain't gonna help you. Remembering and making and not making the same mistakes again makes more sense. You understand? If you forget, you just go do the same thing again. You talking about if your eye causes you to see and pluck it out? There's a lot of things that can cause you to see. But you don't see him. He tell you how to fix this in nature. Through him and his words. And the thing is, God would help you fix your infirmities. It took a lay of the smack of down on David for him to straighten up. Hey, for, for what you did, strife going to be in your house for the rest of your life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I did it, though. I take I take responsibility for my action. You see, that was wrong with people these days. That they, they don't want to take responsibility for action. Well, God forgave me. I don't need no repercussions from you. <laughs> what? All right. You're a murderer. You just killed somebody's son in a blind rage or premeditated, right? And you go to church Sunday and give your life to Jesus before you go to jail. Or you give your life to Jesus and expect them not to go to jail. Does life work like that? No. <laughs> What he just said, you will not leave until you have paid the last tittle, until you have paid the last cast into prison. <laughs> what make you think you get a free pass? Because Jesus, I believe, I just killed somebody yesterday. Forgive me, Lord, and don't let me go to jail. So you get a free pass and you go kill somebody else. Forgive me, Lord. I was going to read something else this morning. I was, man. I was like, I was going to read about the the wayward concubine. I talked about it in Judges. But I might read about it tomorrow since I gave you some insight from the new. So I may just read it tomorrow. Why? Because it's important to me. All of the Bible is to me. You know, all of it is important. You know, but the story I touched based on it yesterday is about a, a wayward wife who left her, a concubine who left her man to be a whore. Lee, you see, why did Jesus say, go your way and sin no more to the lady caught in the act of adultery? He said that as a warning. So it's up to her not to commit adultery again. Same with anybody else. Go your way and murder no more. You understand? You know, I, I, I helped you this time now. Unless a worse thing come to you. So the thing is, the more you get chastised, the more you stop doing things, you're gonna as you get older, you get more humbler. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Most people think you're gonna step in the church and you're gonna be perfect the next day. Peter took forever to get right. He told Peter specifics. He said, Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you are converted, stripping the brethren. Basically told Peter, you ain't right yet. You ain't got it all together yet. But you will. Peter walked and talked with Jesus and had a knife in his hand. Sink! Hey, Peter. You live by the sword. You die by the sword. And people love putting that on their hands. They love tattooing that on their body. Live by the gun. Die by the gun. Gun. Like it's a good saying. That's not a great saying. Because if Peter would have went slicing people up all the time. <laughs> come on, man. People that take the Bible and put it on their bodies and don't even know what it means. Basically, he's telling people, I live by the gun. 
That's all you're doing. You're telling people you live by the gun. And you wonder why people don't trust you. Uh -huh. It's okay. God is good. You know, I ain't going to be too harsh on you today. To me, Jesus was harsh enough right then. I ain't got to say too much more. Jesus said what would need to be said. But you know, you rarely see these lessons being taught in the churches anymore. The Sermon on the Mount, one of the most powerful sermons in the Bible. To me, probably the best. Because it came from the horse's mouth. It came from Jesus' mouth. Letting you know that I didn't do away with nothing. Until all is fulfilled. So, take that to the bank. You understand? Everything's in place for a reason. I was watching the, my, my, my cousin showed me a video yesterday, man. I'm going to end with this. There was a man in church. He was preaching. And he's, he, I said it yesterday. He talked about his lustfulness. Basically, I need some, you know, P-U-S-S-Y. He sung it in the church. But I bet you if he was married like the Lord told him to be. You see, if y'all really go by the Bible, okay, let's say uh, a husband, a man loses his wife and he's in the pool pit. Right? Let's say she dies. Wouldn't it be time to get somebody else in there who has a wife? First of all, he's grieving now. Now it's time to put somebody else in play. You know, so if a man is in the pool pit with no wife, maybe it's time for him to be replaced. So stuff like that wouldn't happen. All right, people, you get it. Have a blessed one.